for this news. South Africa's national and provincial elections, which are scheduled to take place sometime between May and August, will be closely watched by global and local investors, as they will determine the future direction of the country's policies. And we have Langa Malamele of SMP Global Market Intelligence in the Biz News Studio to discuss what investors are looking for. Hi Langa, welcome to Biz News. Hi Linda, thank you very much for having me. So what are you guys looking out for? Well, it's uh, obviously a, a, a pivotal election for, for a number of fronts. Certainly, we think that, you know, for the first time, probably in, in, in democratic South Africa, there is the realistic likelihood um, of, of there not being an outright majority winner uh, uh, for the first time. And so that has all sorts of implications, some of which from a... a so the governance perspective we've seen play out at the local election level, uh, for example, um, where we've seen sort of a lot of uh, tension, a lot of a lot of uh, policy paralysis, high sort of rates of, of churn in terms of leadership, uh, votes of no confidence, and 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 that kind of thing. And so it's it's going to be interesting first and foremost uh, to to see if that is the case and uh, how how then the sort of major parties uh, navigate that. Investors are always looking for political stability. Are, are they worried of, of the fact that the ANC might lose its majority and that would lead to more political instability? I think to a certain extent that may, that may well be the case in, in, in that, uh, you know, I've spoken about policy paralysis and that, that, that's something that we, we probably would see in the, in the major areas and in, in the key policy areas. One thinks about the sort of ongoing uh, electricity shortage in the country, which is which is quite severe, and 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 the broader infrastructure problems. If one thinks about the uh, rail and transport operator Transit and some of the difficulties that have been experienced there, um, those two sort of state-owned enterprises and their fate, uh, and how how that is resolved, are hugely important to the economic fortunes of the country. I mean, and so that, that those are those are key areas where there needs to be policy clarity. There's been a lot of churn in terms of leadership at, at both those institutions um, in recent times. Uh, obviously, famously last year uh, under the rate, uh, leaving leaving ESCOM, um, and we've seen significant or a high number of res- resignations towards the latter part of 2023 within Transnet itself. And so, um, you know, those issues and the boards, board compositions and those kinds of things, those tend to be political decisions, right? And so when you have more sort of cooks in the kitchen where, where it's concerned from a political point of view, um, it's only going to get more difficult, uh, what, what one imagines. And so I think that there's a lot of focus around that. What kind of policy certainty can you get in terms of in terms of resolving the, the, the electricity issues? And uh, in terms of resolving the, uh, the 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 infrastructure issues, uh, the problems at the port, the problems with with roads and rail, um, but also, you know, more broadly, just in terms of debt sustainability, uh, I think you know, government is. We heard from the minister of, of uh, the treasury at the medium term budgetary policy statement in in in, in November. You know the intention to sort of tighten and 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 scale back and try to manage debt more prudently, um, and the government has made some steps in that direction. But there's there's the small factor of this election coming up, and there's their capability and the policy sort of decisions that we expect to come out, uh, both within the state of the nation address in Feb, but then the budget later on uh, in February as well uh, will be interesting from that perspective. Uh, to see that tension between this threat of losing an outright majority from the African National Congress's perspective versus uh, the need to be, the express need to be more prudent from a fiscal point of view. Those are the kinds of things I think that that, that we're looking at and that will be very instructive uh, from a policy statements point of view over the next month or so. Well, I've just come from a news conference from the IEC, and I mean, it's going to be tricky. There's so many parties participating. There are these new entrants. So what do you think the new entrants like Mkonto is, is where what kind of influence might they have on the election and the stability of the election and possible violence? Well, I think, um, yes, some new entrants. Mkonto itself, I think that that's probably more likely to be 
if there is a uh, risk of political violence, it's likely to be sort of confined to particular areas of the country. Um, it, I think that the uh, obviously headline grab or where Mkwinti sees where this new formation is concerned, I mean, there's a number of them, but obviously the, the key one is the fact that it's a party that has been endorsed by, some would argue, created by the former president of the African National Congress, uh, former president Jacob Zuma, and so, um, and that is that is something that we think was is likely to have an impact in terms of in terms of uh, Guazul Natal, certainly northern parts of Guazul Natal, um, and again it'll affect the fortunes of of the ANC to some extent, um, and. <clears throat> Then, then give yeah, depending on how on how it, it sort of it, it pans out in, in, if it in terms of voter share, uh, it may even affect what what happens at the provincial government level. Um, you know, if if Adam Kondoisis were were to get somewhere, let's say double figures of the vote in Wazir Natal, it starts to significantly change the landscape because then it's it's probably taking voters away from the African National Congress. Um, but probably from some of the others as well, including the Inkata Freedom Party. But that probably works to the advantage of an Inkata Freedom Party um, more more than more than any other. Um, so, will it have an impact? Uh, I think so. Um, you know, it remains to be seen. But but it's likely to sort of localize and very regional. Um, and and again, one thinks about Western Natal, one thinks about Northern Western Natal. And perhaps, if I may add, also in Conto Esizwe was obviously the name of the ANC's former military wing, and the the sort of oh, the undertones then are, are it, it has sort of almost a, a military militaristic kind of um, a posture in its language, uh, and much of the policy perhaps what you know which we, we wouldn't know much about at this stage um, is unclear, but. As the campaign gathers steam on both sides, you're likely to hear a sort of militaristic type of language, and that's really where, where perhaps the threat of of of, of uh, probably localized small incidents of violence are are, are are likely to 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 um to occur. I don't think that it necessarily poses a big risk of of, of major violent conflicts in Guazul Natal or, or elsewhere, but again. It's the it's this almost reference to a military struggle and playing on that language and that and that history, uh, which is obviously tactic tactically done, you know, to sort of shake up and to scare the ANC, if you like. Um, that that perhaps adds that little bit of uh, of, of 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 risk um, of these minor, as I say, localized, but probably in and around the election and as a gather steam maybe quite frequent incidents of, of violence. Well, can we look at the opposition parties? Um, they, there was a group now, the multi-party charter, um, but there's so many groups still outside it. How, impo- how important is cohesion between, between the um, opposition parties in what I, I, you could probably call the middles of the political spectrum of the country for, to, to make a difference, to be seen differently, that South Africa is be seen differently by investors? Well, I think, you know, We've seen at local level how how much parties have struggled to work together. You know, parties that are in the opposition. Um, you know, a, a lot of South African politics is so sort of deeply ideologically driven. Um, a lot of some of these new parties, are, you know, are, are, are less so, and they'll attach themselves to one particular issue. Um, for example, you've had you've had Action SA, which has not done badly for itself and is a relatively new party, and sort of took on this issue of of um, of of migration and e- illegal immigrants, uh, and and sort of uh, you know the descending on 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 Johannesburg for economic opportunities of migrants from the the, the sub-Saharan African region and so on, and the pressure that that puts then, or the idea that that perhaps takes jobs away from South Africans. Playing on, on on those kinds of things and the underlying sort of xenophobic uh, sentiment that perhaps exists in the country, um, and you've got an economic freedom fighters which has much more of a pan African uh, Africanist outlook, 
um, and is and is vehemently opposed to that kind of language when it comes to things like um, when it comes to things like job creation and, and, and employment and so on and ways to solve the employment issue. So you've got all these smaller players within within the, the, the political space, but in key policy areas, they are so strongly uh, uh, sort of <laughs> diametrically opposed to each other that it, it 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 works in the favor of the ANC, and so whilst the ANC, from a policy and a policy implementation point of view, certainly from a perception point of view, in terms of corruption and things like that, the the sort of uh, cost of living crisis, um, the material difficulties, um, it benefits from these kinds of things, and that the opposition struggles to work together against it, um, and 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 that's that's been the case we've seen recently, and I. I suspect that that's something that's likely to continue. So where perhaps ANC electoral share declines, um, it doesn't necessarily benefit one of the major opposition parties to the extent that it that it that it becomes almost a a, a likely successor to the ANC, if you know what I mean. So I think that's that's where that's where the ANC tends to benefit from a lack of cohesion amongst uh, and, and a lack of options perhaps for for voters uh, amongst the opposition um, does it uh, the fact that the opposition the, with the multi-party charter doesn't have a figurehead a specific leader that they can put forward does that make it more difficult for them I think so um and I, I think it's symbolic of the of the sort of issues that that, that we're outlining right that, that that they that you know the one thing they have in common is just that they they want the ANC out of power, but it, it, it probably stops there. Uh, and once you start to get to the granular issues which matter to South Africans about how is it that you intend to 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 create jobs for young people, for example, um, uh, and and how is it that you intend to 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 fix the the electricity issue? You know, are you are you going to extend the life of coal-fired power stations? Are you going to double down? Are you going to uh, you know reinvest and and um, and use South Africa's almost strategic advantage in terms of the vast coal reserves that it has, or are you going to go in the way of of, of renewables? And are you going to implement, you know, these these uh, emergency programs that have been that have been rolled out over a period of time? Um, how are you going to do that? How are you going to align the grid to any new sort of plan around electricity distribution? When it comes to any of the key issues, they they, they almost inevitably fall apart, and so it's a support. Part, it's partly having a political figurehead, a lack thereof. But like I say, that's symbolic of the fact that on any of the major politi- uh, 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 policy issues, uh, those coalitions quite quite easily um, quite easily sort of diverge and and and, and disintegrate. So, so um, if the ANC is going to look for coalition partners, if they fall under fifty percent, um, where do you think they would be looking? Um, so I, th- I don't think that they, ha- they would have to look far for a, for a partner. I think if we step back a little bit and look at at uh, what's happened in terms of electoral share for the ANC over the past series of elections, um, you know, they're they're coming from is it approximately sixty three percent of the, of the voter share in two thousand and fourteen? Then it becomes about fifty seven percent in two thousand and nineteen, and so. Uh, given the persistent issues, uh, as, as we've spoken about, you've got a large number of new voters coming in. Uh, the IEC, uh, who I believe you're in conversation with, are, 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 were pl- quite pleased with the number of young people that signed up for it at the previous registration weekend. Another registration weekend coming up in a week or two, where they'll be trying to capture new young voters who, who to some extent, you know, are, are sort of agnostic to, to some of the, the historical issues that that, that underpin um, um, voting patterns in South Africa. So, so I think that if the ANC were to not achieve an outright majority, it is unlikely to be by a massive margin. And so that's to say, it's unlikely to need a partner, which partner would derail it from its policy path significantly, like the EFF. Yeah. Like the economic freedom fighters, uh, which is the one you, you know the, 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 that that's easy. The sort of people tend to think of it, it, it's it's likely to go for a smaller partner like the Good Party, um, you know. And you 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 may know that uh, ever since uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, who's the the the, uh, the current president of the ANC, came into into office in government, he has had Patricia DeLille, who was the founder and leader of the Good Party. 
in his cabinet in various portfolios, including tourism and public works, and Mark, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that was that's kind of in retrospect a very strategic move uh, because you know if if the good party were then to to be uh, needed uh, to to form a coalition with the ANC, it becomes very easy to do so. The ANC gets those extra handful of seats, let's say. Um, that it requires to form a government, and, and and there you go. So, so you know we at at, at S and P Global and Market Intelligence, we don't we don't call the election. We you know it, it, it can go anyway. But in in terms of our thinking and our, and our, what, what we're forecasting is that the a, the ANC you know is likely to 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 suffer for you know to some extent uh, some some shedding of of of, of voter share but um you know we don't think that some mass, some big coalition is required um to to to, to be able to form a government yeah so it won't, won't won't need maybe go for the DA or the EFF it would go for a small party like like good so um do you think investors might have a wait and see attitude to see what's happening in the election in terms of investment to see what the outcome would be is there sort of the uncertainty that there is? Um, would, would people be hesitant to sort of engage in South Africa right now? Uh, I think it's. I think it's likely. I mean, again, it's it's it, there's there's the election itself, which, uh, as we've mentioned, um, potentially has has quite uh, significant policy implications, uh, depending on obviously on the outcome. Um, and but 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 there are the the, the key policy. Issues where 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 some sort of level of certainty is required anyway. You know this latest iteration of the of the uh, integrated resource plan and 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 you know what what is actually the outlook and what is the plan with regards to with regards to the, the energy policy um, and what is the plan in terms of getting in infrastructure improved and fixed and 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 up to scratch and trying to deal with the enormous backlogs. That are that are that are occurring, and so election or not, there there's there's in, in these underlying questions where where I think investors would have, would have been waiting in any case, with bated breath to see exactly what the plan is, um, but the election will say a lot about the capacity of the executive to drive those policies home, um, and to and to make them effective, uh, especially where SOEs are concerned. Which are still at the center of the economy and so crucial. If you don't have electricity, if you can't import and and, and export uh, effectively because of a dilapidated infrastructure, you know the, the, those those things are going to are, are going to hamper uh, you, you, your ability to do to do business effectively in South Africa. So those don't go away with or without the election. But certainly, yeah, in terms of executive capacity to implement, uh, the election is crucial. So do you think voters are going to vote because of load shedding? That is what's going to sway them, not uh, the ANC is the devil we know, um, or the new parties will actually solve these issues. What what would you think would sway voters? I think that part of um, our analysis is is what we've seen is, first of all, so the voter turnout in South Africa is, is, has been in significant decline. And... Um, and and towards in, in decline towards almost like a global average it's towards something that's more normal. So you know, the euphoria of nineteen ninety four and, and and thereafter, which the ANC was able to ride, um, saw people turn out in enormous numbers to come out and vote. Probably peaking in two thousand and four, yet massive voter turnout, and it's and it's sort of grad, gradually moving towards the mean, right? Um, and it, from a global perspective, and so. Um, I, I think I think that that has its, its advantages and disadvantages. To a certain extent, what you tend to see from a uh, ANC voter perspective is they are less likely, in the main, to move from the ANC to another party because of the underperformance of the ANC, let's call it, than they are to not vote at all, to withhold their vote altogether because of disappointment with the ANC. And that speaks again to sort of the fragmented nature of the opposition, how the opposition in South Africa has struggled to articulate a clear position on the big issues 
Um, you know, the, the, the Democratic Alliance obviously is, has been the official opposition uh, all this time since since 1994. But there are some of the big issues that matter to the bulk of the electorate around which it has not effectively articulated itself and has n not clearly taken a, a strong stance. Things like, you know, transformation of the economy, um, uh, issue, issues issues around, um, you know, land and so on, uh, and and then and, and and things like that, where, where the ANC is very bold and very clear in terms of economic transformation, um, you know, uh, black economic empowerment, uplifting historically disadvantaged people and giving them opportunities uh, to excel in the economy and things like that. Whereas parties like the Democratic Alliance have it, have, have sort of been somewhere betwixt in between all this time and 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 not taken a firm position. And that tends to, dis to defer voters. So yeah, I think... In the main, you're, you're likely to see something similar where uh, perhaps voter, voter uh, turnout would not be as high as it's historically been. But I think where the ANC perhaps faces challenges is in the fact that you've got a, little, a lot, uh, according to the IC, a lot of new young voters that are coming in um, and that vote more along the issues that you're discussing, you know. Um, the fact that we pay enormous prices for electricity and hardly have electricity after half the time, right? Um, the fact that, you know, in, in, uh, the, the cost of living is so high uh, and things like that. So how do you think investors should navigate the risk and opportunities presented by the upcoming elections? Um, I think that, that I, would, I would be hesitant to give, to give investor advice. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not someone who, who's, uh, who's qualified to do that. Um, but I think that, like I say, the electricity issues, the issues around infrastructure, that's really where the key the key debates are. Uh, with the the appointment of an electricity minister at the beginning of last year did make a difference in our assessment in terms of having some coherence within government, all these different advisory bodies, bodies, and um, and the and the sort of uh, inertia that came out of having so many different centers of power and decision making places in trying to resolve this work problem. Having the electricity minister uh, was key, and I think that uh, what happens with that role, the powers that are given to that role, um, and 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 uh, sort of the support that's given to that role, if it is a role that is to continue in a new administration, I think is key because. He, more than anyone, uh, the Minister of Electricity, Hossier Soramakopa, has demonstrated an ability to start to actually materially solve these problems. Um, and so th that's, a, that's an important indicator for me is, is, is what happens with this role. Is it given more powers? Um, and and what, what, what is, it, what is um, the fate of, of the position itself? And then uh, the, you know, the powers that are assigned to it. And we've seen gradually some part, more powers be given to the role, taken away from the Minister of Minerals and Energy. Uh, I'd see that as a positive. So, the appointment of of of, an, of a new leadership within Transnet uh, to look at the extent to which these are qualified people that you have a board there that is qualified and supportive um, of of the of the executive uh, is going to be absolutely crucial to resolving the problems. Um, if we see more of the usual faces, more of a sort of a high level of political uh, uh, involvement and disruption in terms of board and executive appointments at those key state-owned enterprises, uh, it's likely that the problems we've experienced uh, will take longer to resolve um, than, might, than might otherwise be the case. Well, Lango Malamela from SP Globe with Market Intelligence. Thank you so much for speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Linda.